Hello, my name is Neil Poulter. I'm Chair of Preventive Cardiovascular Medicine at Imperial College London, and I'm the immediate past president of the International Society of Hypertension. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the Drug Treatment of Hypertension section of the new 2020 ISH guidelines to you. The first slide shows the uh, thresholds and targets, and at the top, we'll deal with the thresholds. The story is that once you've got established diagnosis of hypertension, however that is achieved most effectively in your setting, and that lifestyle has um, not normalized the blood pressure, we're left with the two grades of hypertension we've spoken about earlier, grade one and grade two. Now if you're in grade one and at high risk, either by virtue of your risk factors or because you've got established uh, cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, or hypertension-mediated organ damage. Uh, we feel that in that level of blood pressure, you should get immediate treatment. Similarly, if you're in grade two, 160 and or over 100 and above, uh, whether you're in the optimal or essential setting, once again, we feel you should get immediate drug treatment. The difference comes for those who are at lower risk amongst the grade one population. Now in an ideal world, the optimal setting, we think that after pushing the lifestyle advice thing, if that still continues not to normalize blood pressure, these people would, should also receive drug treatment. The only really difference here is for those settings where there's limited drug availability in low risk people, in the grade one range of blood pressures. And in that setting, you may have, because of resources, to uh, ration the drug usage. And we just recommend in that setting, if that's the situation, give it to those uh, at the highest end of this low risk group, perhaps those who are older. Now turning to the um, targets at the bottom of the slide, subdivided by essential and optimal, those in the essential um, setting, we just say try and get the blood pressure down by at least 20 over 10. Ideally moving to less than 140, 90, and that should try to get that done within three months. In the ideal setting, that's stratified by age. If you're under 65, the target is simply less than 130 over 80, if tolerated, but don't go lower than 120, 70. And if you're 65 and above, your target's less than 140, 90, if tolerated. But we have to consider individualized therapy in the context of elderly people, frailty, independence, and tolerability of treatment. The next slide shows the uh, drug choices and sequencing that we're recommending. I'll deal with the optimal ideal setting on the right here in the bluey color. The first thing to stay, say is that we're hoping that we'll be using single pill combinations uh, throughout, if possible. And the reason we do that is our step one is to start with two drugs uh, at low dose in combination. And the combination we've selected for simplicity and perhaps reflecting the results of the accomplished trial too is A plus C. Let me explain. A, this is the system initiated by NICE almost 20 years ago now in UK, where A stands for ACE or ARB, so a RAS blocker, plus C, calcium channel blocker. So that's the initial combination we recommend. The footnotes tell us that we may use other combinations for specific settings and ethnicities, but that's our basic uh, go-to combination, A plus C, initiating at low dose. If that's not enough to get you to target, then you get the full dose of that same combination, A plus C at full dose. If that's not enough, you go to step three, which is A plus C plus D, and the D, the diuretic we've selected, is a thiazide-like diuretic. Now, if after A plus C plus D, you are not controlled, you are by definition resistant, we go on to step four, and we recommend the addition of spironolactone, typical dose range shown there. 
We've also given some other options, if spironolactone, if the potassium's too high, or it's not tolerated, some other options. But we think spironolactone is probably the best choice to recommend. Now, if you're not in the optimal situation, uh, the recommendations for the essential situation are very simple, and that is use whatever drugs are available with as many of the ideal characteristics of antihypertensive agents as possible. And that list of ideal characteristics I'll show in the next slide. We're saying use free combinations if you can't get hold of single pill combinations. And we're saying use thiazide diuretics if thiazide-like diuretics are not available or are too expensive, for example. Finally, comment is to say that uh, use an alternative to the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. The C that we spoke about here is dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker, but you can use alternatives to that if they're not tolerated, for example, using diltiazem or verapamil. In both settings, we've added in a rider about beta blockade. They should be continued at, considered at any step if there's a specific indication for their use, such as heart failure, angina, post-MI, atrial fibrillation, etc. The next slide gives you those ideal drug characteristics which we think apply. First of all, treatment should be evidence-based, ideally, uh, in relation to the morbidity and mortality prevention. Secondly, uh, Use a once daily regimen, giving 24 hour blood pressure control. Thirdly, treatment should be affordable and or cost effective relative to other antihypertensive agents. Fourthly, the treatment should be well tolerated. And finally, in an ideal world, we'd have the evidence of benefits of those medications in the populations to which they are to be applied. So to summarize that, a fairly extensive and key part of the guidelines. Here's the first bit of summary. Uh, once the hypertension is established and is uncontrolled by lifestyles, the treatment threshold is 140 and above and 90 and above. But at those at the lowest risk, with the lowest, uh, that could be raised to 160 over 100. As far as the drug treatment targets concerned, stratified in the uh, optimal setting, if you're under 65, it's 130.80. If you're 65 and above, it's 140.90. And in the essential sitting, setting, just get the blood pressure down by at least 20 over 10. And finally, uh, looking now at the drug treatment in the optimal setting, we say you should up titrate to target, starting with low dose, a plus C, that's RAS blocker plus calcium channel blocker, rising to full dose A plus C, going to A plus C plus D. Uh, and then that goes on, if that's insufficient, A plus C plus D, add in spiral actone. Now, we've given um, a caveat that you may not wish to start. It may be not suitable for certain combinations, certain specific uh, patient subgroups. You may use other initial combinations. We've said if we can use uh, single pill combinations where possible, and use thiazide like diuretics preferentially to thiazides. In the essential setting, where less ideal agents are available, just focus on getting the effective blood pressure lowering, which we've defined as 20 over 10 at least. Thank you for your attention.